According to Ofsted, Cookmere House Special School transforms the lives of EBD pupils. What can mainstream learn from its approach? Most of the 51 boys at Cookmere House School are taxied in from all over East Sussex. Good morning, TJ. Good morning, TJ. Thank you. All have severe emotional, behavioural and social difficulties. Morning, gentlemen. Principal Frank Stanford is there every morning to welcome them. <laughs> the vast majority of pupils will have been excluded from at least two mainstream schools. Uh, the vast majority of pupils, when they come to us, tend to have been out of education for a period of time. But they are, and potentially are, very, very difficult. It's very strange concept to get your head around that if we're not having problems, we've got the wrong pupils. What did you do at your previous school? Would you be prepared to say? Naughty things. Right. Would you be prepared to say what sort of naughty things? Climbing the roof. And? Burn trees. Yeah. All sorts. I used to beat up kids. Yeah. Um, get excluded. Yeah. Then I got expelled. Again, without boasting or being silly, honestly. Beat up people. Yeah. What, got, what caused you to get... Hit teachers. The pupils feel, feel safe. I, I don't want to take away... We are a school. We are about education. Um, and it, it's very easy sometimes to be sort of drawn into a, a, a wider therapeutic approach. Now, you, you could argue that we are therapeutic, you could argue that education in itself is a therapy. Uh, and therefore it is about building self-esteem, it is about success, it is about challenge. And I know all of those things sound very twee, but it, it is real. And you've got to bring them all together and, and try and get the right balance. I think we're effective because we have good teaching at heart, we make things interesting, we allow all children to access so that for the first time in their lives for some of them they actually achieve because they're allowed to. If children can't write, we'll write for them, uh, you know, we'll record it, we'll uh, take photographs, we're, we, we go out of our way to capture our kids doing well. Classes are small, only eight pupils. Students usually have the same tutor and TA throughout each key stage. If you look on your desk, right? Paul Munton teaches his Year 8 group they DT, ICT and right. Maths. They need to stay in that order. One of the most difficult things is every lesson I have to do, as far as them learning things, has to be a kind of almost a practical activity. Even if it's not a practical subject, it almost has to be... There has to be something else rather than the content of the lesson, whether that is... Um, modelling things or using competitions or creating games or whatever, everything. You can't just get a book out, get a worksheet out and go through things. It just doesn't work. They're, they would be so disinterested in it in seconds. H times R. Flick it up. Want the answer writing down. Look at H. Next one. How many sevens are in E? B add D. If you get it right, you get three points. Yeah. All right, lads, next one. Flick your numbers back over again. By the end of each lesson, they almost have to have something. They have to have felt that they have actually done something. They're not very good at looking long-term at targets. They can't do something that in five or six weeks might give them an end product, really. They have to see a certain amount of achievement every single lesson, and that has to be measured by them. And the only and majority of times they measure things is when they actually see a tangible thing in front of them. Free up for the first three people, for the highest free scores of the day. I've got to say that you have got to get a grip on um, the actual behaviour management of the class, otherwise, regardless of how fantastic the activity might be that you've planned and however well and tight it might be planned, if you're not um, on top of them, then it'll just go to pot. Sit down. Danny, sit down. Sit down, Danny. Sit down. One student is all it takes to, uh, to trigger an entire sort of... Not riot, that's not a very good word, is it? But you know what I mean? I think the mantra we use is there are consequences to everything you do. If you do things right, you're going to have rewards. And we're very keen on rewards. We put rewards in everywhere, whether it's verbal praise, whether it's, um, we have a, um, 
a grading system, so and there are points for that, and children are very keen on getting the grades. All pupils have behaviour targets, and at the end of every lesson, pupils' behaviour is graded on a scale of A to F. Three grades lower than a C on somebody's log sheet for the entire week means that on a Friday they get to do sanctions rather than options. Options include things like going swimming or going through Silla's Wildlife Park or going climbing or if they don't make that, they're in sanctions, which means for an hour and 15 minutes on a Friday they're doing maths. A's, B's and C's for your break. And I'm, going to, I'm sorry about this, but I'm going to continue insisting that anybody who does something really stupid during the day, I'm going to keep them in. Yeah, the kids are very clear in their own mind what makes a good grade and what makes a bad grade. Um, they're very clear in their own mind what happens to them if they get good grades and what happens if they get bad. Although it seems strange to think that some of these large secondary children would be actually concerned about getting an A grade or getting a merit or getting a certificate or a piece of paper saying the sportsman of the week or a sticker. It actually matters to them because it's something they've never had in their life and it makes them feel valued. Top person this week. Someone At the end of the week, they have an assembly celebrating achievement. ...has turned it around. He lost his temper the other day. He was in the gym. And I said, don't throw that ball up there. Please don't throw that ball up there. Then I shouted, don't throw that ball up there. Got very, very annoyed. And I thought, hello, here we go. Turned around, pulled his fist back and put a beautiful punch on the door because he was so controlling his temper. And I was so pleased that he's actually getting his temper right. He is now winning... Top student of the week. Well done, Phil. Of course, not only good behaviour has consequences. For bad behaviour, pupils not only get a poor grade, but a detention. <laughs> Teachers and TAs can give detention, and if necessary, pupils stay after school. It's really important that if a, if a pupil does something wrong, today that we try and deal with that today and that the response is appropriate to the action, that we don't go over the top. There is a consequence to every action and at some point they've got to take responsibility for their own actions. If anybody gets themselves into more than one situation where they've got to be restrained, well, we're not going to they're not going out to do it because it shows you can't obey a simple staff instruction. The class gets to talk about their grades and behaviour with their tutor. Bad thing is that I lost my temper mm. at staff school. You did, but I said I'd keep you, and I did. And we didn't start off wonderfully well. And I've had a talk to you this morning about swearing and finding another phrase to mean I'm fed up, I'm angry. You've got the right to feel angry, you've got the right to feel annoyed. I feel angry and annoyed, you know, quite a lot of the time. Do you realise that, Richie? But I don't tell people to F off or use bad language. There's got to be, this is what adults do, darling, we find a better way of expressing ourselves. All the staff are trained in positive handling, and in some situations they are willing to use restraint. There are circumstances um, where, where a pupil will, will lose the plot completely, and at that point we have to take uh, responsibility for them, shall we say. You know, I won't allow them to, to assault anyone, I won't allow them to sort of... Uh, kick desks over and smash computers and, you know, etc. And it, it's not very pleasant to be involved in that. Sometimes I lash out, but sometimes I just walk away and leave it. You don't get restrained in mainstream, but you do here if you're naughty. Mm -hmm. It's just to calm you down and stuff, just so you settle down. There's little unstructured time. TAs and teachers eat with the boys, and at break, they play sports or supervise other activities. So pupils and staff get to know each other very well. We have respect for the children, and they give it back to us because they have very, very clear boundaries and expectations, in that we don't tolerate their poor behaviour. But we will always give them a chance to make it right again, in that we do not reject them, because they've had rejection all their lives. Have you been yeah. nice to them? Have you been nice back to you? They, if you give them respect, they give respect back. Raising your voice is quite possibly the worst thing that you can do 
in front of these sort of kids because that's all they've ever had. That's the only reaction they ever get when they're in normal school. Perhaps in their own lives, the only way that they see that things get put right is by shouting, is by being quite violent. And so I present myself as completely the opposite of that. And they sound kind of warm to that and respect it, really, in a way. That looks like a terrific tree we can build round. The school has a popular program of outdoor pursuits. Today, Year 7 are competing to build the best wigwam. Outdoor pursuits is one of those activities which is really vital to our pupils because they just, when they arrive here, they have got such poor social skills, they are such social isolates that they have very little concept of teamwork. So it actually gives them a chance to get out the school, which, you know, as we said, schools are stressy for them, and to have a day where they can do fun and exciting activities. From morning briefings to weekly year team meetings, there are many levels of communication. Regular communication is vital. What is important is that it's, it's constant and that staff are aware of, of something that may have taken place the lesson before or during a break time uh, or the night before. Um, and and there, are, there are systems in place that are about to uh, occur. But the communication that makes all the difference is with parents. So. Every week, the year team sends home a copy of their behaviour sheet and also phones every parent or carer. I think a lot of our parents actually say, they say, this is the first time in our life we don't dread a phone call from the school. Because when we had a phone call from the school before, we always knew something ghastly had happened. He'd done this, he'd done that, he's coming home. But now we know that it might be it's not been particularly good, but we also know you know, there's a good chance that we're going to be told he's done something fantastic. Kick my house, whether it's negative or positive, they phone either way and ask, you know, just how things are. And sometimes that is what you do need, because I felt very isolated before. All I used to hear was negative, negative all the time. And I said, God, when is someone going to be on my side? Charmaine's son, TJ, has severe anger problems. Only when he reached Cookmere House nearly three years ago, was he diagnosed with ADHD? I've changed since I've come here because, like, they've helped me to, like, keep my temper in, like, control. And, like, they've helped. They told the doctors, but I need, like, tablets and everything. They if I didn't have no tablets or nothing, I'd probably end up lashing out. Like, hit them. But now, uh, I think before I do something. Well, I try to think before I do something. He's changed so much. He was a difficult child to look after, but now I've got my family back. We can be a family again. Because he's learnt how to... He's learnt how to wait, be patient. He's learnt self-control. He didn't have none of that before. Um, I don't know. It's just so happy to have my son and my family back together again. The things that he's taught me as a teacher after six years in mainstream, right, is a huge sense of humour you need. You need to have incredible patience, which is what I thought I had before I got here. And you also need to be incredibly forgiving. And you need to give pupils a brand new start every 20 minutes of the day, every day. And, and, and that's a massive key to what we do.